Apple makes its way down and 1981 draws to a close. For Cable News Network and CNN 2, this is James Allen Miklaszewski in Times Square wishing you a Happy New Year! It's New Year's Day on the East Coast, 9 p.m. out west. I'm Denise LeClaire. And I'm Chuck Roberts on CNN 2. Our two top stories, the ushering in of 1982 in Times Square. And the birth of America's second 24-hour all-news television network. In New York City, the kissing and hugging continue. While some 900 miles to the south, a fireworks display in front of Turner Broadcasting's Atlanta headquarters heralds in the new year and the premiere of CNN 2. Now with more on the festivities in Times Square, let's go back again live to CNN correspondent James Allen Miklaszewski in Times Square. We're back here in Times Square. As you can see, the crowd has no intentions of leaving, even though 1982 is already several minutes old. The fireworks are beginning to go off. Some of the crowd is beginning to make its way down the side street. But as, as New York police will tell you, it's going to take several, several uh, minutes before the crowd of some 500,000 clears out of Times Square. All we can say is that it's been a great night so far here at Times Square. A very exuberant but ruly crowd. Everybody has enjoyed themselves. And uh, as I say, you can, as you can see, the, the crowd here has no intention of leaving or letting up their celebration. We'll be back to you in just a little bit to keep you up to date on the celebration in Times Square. But in the meantime, back to Atlanta. You're in tune with the world. This is CNN 2. Hello again and Happy New Year. In the news, Poland's military regime will force the unemployed into compulsory labor in an effort to put Poland's economy back on its feet. Poland's official head of state, Henryk Jablonski, issued a New Year's message warning all Poles to cooperate with the military regime and avoid civil war. The message was similar to the Christmas address of Poland's Prime Minister General, Wojciech Jaruzelski, but a top solidarity leader issued a plea from his hideout calling on Polish soldiers and police to resist the martial law government. A Polish fishing boat motored out of Vancouver Harbor Thursday without 12 defected seamen. Three other ships remain anchored in the Canadian harbor while their crews debate whether to refuse assigned work or block the vessels from leaving port. 90% of the Polish seamen are reportedly solidarity members. So, several of them say they are afraid to vote for the strike for fear of reprisals when they return home. So far, 63 sailors have defected to Canada and 27 more have requested permission to stay in Canada. A former Air Force lieutenant is now in control of the small West African nation of Ghana. Jerry Rawlings took control of that nation in a military coup on Thursday. David Smith has details. We hope to have that a little bit later. Secret Service agents have arrested a man they claim has threatened the president. The arrest was made in Denver, but the Secret Service office there won't disclose the nature of the threats against Mr. Reagan. They say only the 32-year-old James Michael Welch was arrested for allegedly making verbal threats concerning the president. Welch is described as an unemployed x-ray technician. He was arrested at his parents' Denver home without incident. The Guardian Angels are calling for an investigation into the shooting death of one of its members by a Newark, New Jersey police officer Wednesday night. CNN's Jeannie Mose has more on that story. With his red jacket and his hat, he held his hands up, blew his whistle and said, I'm a Guardian Angel. And he got shot. 
That's how an eyewitness to the shooting described it. Frankie Melvin was shot in the chest at this intersection in front of a high crime housing project in Newark. Melvin was clearly outfitted in Guardian Angel's garb, complete with red beret. Just about everyone milling around the crime scene seemed to know and like the victim. Frankie is a guardian angel. He's good for the community. He helps all the children here in the neighborhood. Newark's police director says Officer Milton Medina shot Frankie Melvin from the roof of this building, shot him because the officer saw Melvin headed towards his partner down below. Halt, the police officer, says he said, and when Melvin didn't, he shot. Him. Other guardian angels say differently. He pulled his um, jacket open to show his shirt, and, they off and the officer shot him in the chest with no questions asked. Frankie Melvin was shot standing right here, but faced the other way. Eyewitnesses say that there's no way a policeman standing on that roof behind me couldn't tell that Frankie was dressed as a guardian angel, especially since he was standing under a street light when he was shot. There are plenty of unanswered questions, and the Angels are calling for an investigation by New Jersey's Attorney General, because they say the Newark Police Department is too close to the controversy to be fair. Ginny Moe's Cable News Network, Newark, New Jersey. Walter Palachek's sister says Walter told her he would rather die than go back to Russia. Walter is the 14-year-old bo Soviet boy who ran away from his parents who were living in Chicago at the time. He refused to return to the Soviet Union with them, but an Illinois appeals court ruled Wednesday that Walter should be returned to his parents. Jeff Flock has more on that. This is the only thing Walter Polovchak had to say Thursday. The 14-year-old Soviet boy has made few public statements since he gained world attention by refusing to return with his parents to their native Soviet Ukraine. The reason Walter has not talked is that most of the time he has been involved in court battles. I think it would be highly improper for me to instruct Walter to answer any questions at this time. I think that Walter is a very brave and courageous young man uh, in taking the position that he has. I think he is really a symbol today of uh, uh, the situation, the fact of life in the Soviet Union. He's a symbol to many dissidents. It is Walter's latest court fight that he is here to discuss with his attorney. They lost this latest battle, but as Kulas explains, they are quite a long way from losing the war. It is not a critical decision for us. Uh, we have a case pending in the federal courts, and uh, it has been our position from the very beginning that the grant of asylum uh, supersedes any state court decision. Earlier, we asked Kulas if he is worried about Walter now. Well, it is possible by anybody to be kidnapped or snatched away, and uh, we are therefore taking some also steps to uh, make sure that Walter is, in, uh, is protected, uh, that he will never be left alone. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, hopeful that uh, uh, nothing will happen until uh, the case, uh, all the issues are resolved. Kulas says he would never stand in Walter's way if he decided he wanted to return to the Soviet Union. But it seems clear. Walter likes it where he is. <laughs> Jeff Flock, Cable News Network, Chicago. Yes. Now eight minutes past the hour. And you're in tune with the world. This is CNN 2. Lincoln Mercury comes a special kind of Cougar. Introducing the 1982 Cougar LS. Come feel the ride of the most civilized five-passenger Cougar ever made. The 1982 Cougar LS. Now, more than ever, the world belongs to Lincoln Mercury. When the pain starts here, the pain stops here. 